career. Um, so we're going to record this session. So it will be available uh, on the Youth Mappers YouTube channel um, once it's been processed. And that'll be sort of a day or so you'll have access to that should you want it. So um, as I mentioned, I'm Richard Hitton. I am the manager of the validation hub for Youth Mappers. And we're located here in Washington, DC at the George Washington University. Oh, you. Want to learn more about um, youth mappers, you can go ahead and scan their QR code. I'm not going to go into too deep into that uh, right now, um, but you can certainly scan that QR code to get more information, or you can hit us up at info at youthmappers.org. All right, so I'm going to jump into things. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And what I'm going to do is sort of talk a little bit about what a little bit about what we're going to do today, what you uh, what you can expect. And um, then we'll sort of jump into things. So um, today we're going to have both a sort of a, a lecture, a talk, some presentation slides on the JOSM tool, the Java OpenStreetMap tool for OSM editing. And this will be coupled with an actual live demo. So if you have JOSM installed, you can follow along with the demo as you wish. But as I mentioned, this will be recorded or this is being recorded so that you can sort of come back, come back to it again later. And to um, we do uh, ask that while you are coming, and sometimes you can get dropped and then come back, please keep yourself on mute um, while you are um, in, uh, while you're listening. As questions come up, please put them into the chat, but we will pause at certain times um, throughout the presentation to address any questions that you have at, uh, at that moment. So our, our plan is to present this information, but as well give you the opportunity to ask questions and answer those to the best of our ability. But as well as things come up, by all means, please put them in the chat because we'll have a number of um, validation members here to help uh, facilitate those questions as they arise. Um, so to that, I'm going to ask the, each of the um, validation hub members to introduce themselves so they can um, um, so they can uh, sort of so you so you have a better idea of who uh, who we're talking with today. All right, so I'm just going to go to the top of my screen here, and Sarah, can you uh, give a brief introduction, please? Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah. Um, I'm a senior here at the George Washington University, and I study environmental science and GIS. And I've been working um, at the Youth Mappers Validation Hub for almost a year. Oh, sorry. Um, how about Danielle? Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Danielle. Um, I study geography and GIS at GW, and I've been with Youth Mappers since like April or May. Oh, Elodie, you can introduce yourself now. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Elodie. I am a senior at the George Washington University as well, and I'm also studying geography and GIS. I've been with the Validation Hub since around May as well, um, and Annika. I'm a senior at George Washington University studying international affairs and geography and GIS and I've been with the validation hub since I think February of this year so yeah and then I guess uh, I'll give it to Joanna hello I'm Joanna um, I am an environmental science student at the George Washington University as well um, I've been working with the hub since February, and I will pass it to Maxwell. Hi, everyone. Um, we are so happy to have you here. I am Maxwell, um, doing my master's program at the George Washington University with the Department of Geography, and I'm focusing on geospatial data science, and I've been with the youth map since August last year. Thank you, guys. So that's our validation uh, hub team, and I'm just looking at the participant list and see a few uh, repeat um, attendees. So welcome back, and if this is your first time, welcome. I hope you enjoy this presentation. Um, I will say that at a quarter after the hour, we're actually going to stop with our presentation and hand it over to um, Shabani Magawila. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, because he's going to then talk about the rapid plugin for Jocelyn. Um, Shibani, would you like to take yourself off mute and give a brief introduction, please? Okay, thank you, Richard. Uh, my name is Shibani Magavira, I'm from Tanzania, and I'm taking a bachelor 
in urban development and environment management at IRDP. Yeah, so I have been in uh, youth member since 2017. I mean, uh, since 2017 up to now. Yeah, so I'm glad to, to be to be here with you. Yeah, thank you. Awesome, thank you very much. So yeah, we'll look forward to your presentation in, during the last 15 minutes or so. So we're gonna um, kick things off now and I'm gonna pass it over to Sarah and Danielle who will be the, your training coordinators for the, um, for the for the time being. And as just as a reminder, please, any questions that come up, put them into the chat and we'll try to answer them as we go. But we'll also pause at various times throughout the presentation and demo to facilitate any questions that are sort of still burning or that come up at that time. So with that, I'm going to put myself on mute. I'm going to close off my camera and hand it over to Sarah and Danielle. It's up to you guys. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share the presentation now. Can you guys all see that? Yep, looks good. OK, cool. Perfect. Um, I'll get us started. So. Um, we already did like our brief introductions. Um, we only have about an hour or so to get through a lot of information. So I'm gonna jump in, but again, um, the chat will be very responsive. So everyone that just introduced themselves will be in the chat if you have any questions. Oh no, wait, my computer just started downloading something. One second, <laughs> cancel that one. Great, we're good. Um, okay, so what is Jawsum? So it's a desktop editing application for OpenStreetMap, but it's written in Java. Um, it runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So like you can use it on pretty much any computer. It's very convenient to download. Um, and uh, so it's also an advanced editing tool in a stable environment, which means that you can use online data and you can check it out to edit it offline. So as long as you have this, um, you're able to edit whatever data you want that's on OSM. Um, and then we'll be teaching you how to push that data back on to the server um, and make sure that everything looks good and that it's like up to good quality standards. Um, it can definitely be a slightly intimidating interface at first, but the next slide will show you kind of like what the different windows are. So here you have um, kind of like what you have as your satellite imagery at first. And then on the sides, on the left and the top, those are gonna be like your tools and the things you're actually acting with. Um, and then you have different panes that show you like the layers that you're working on. If you wanna switch out your imagery, you can do that. Um, we'll kind of show you how to load all of that in there. Um, and then it also shows um, any like validation results if you want to like check your work just if you're squaring buildings which we'll talk about again later but this is generally what it's going to look like this definitely looks like a little bit of an outdated version um, so mm -hmm. so, um it might look a little bit more modern when you don't um then on the slide Dad. we're looking at id editor so most likely if you've used SM or the hot tasking manager, you've used ID editor. Um, so with Jawsum, you can get a little bit more precise and use more of like presets that make it so that your tools are more efficient and you're getting more done using less work. Um, and then these are just a bunch of links for training guides. Um, and the good thing about the fact that this is all open yeah. source is that there's a lot of forums and support online that are free and quick. And a lot of tools have been experimented with. And if you feel like there's a way, it's kind of how I think about it. If you feel like there's a way you could be being more efficient in doing a tool or using Jawsum, you can really just do a quick Google search to see, can I be more efficient? And most likely someone has come up with a tool or there is a shortcut. Um, so these will be made available to you um, after our presentation. So, oh yes, and that's what Richard Hinton just said in the chat, <laughs> cool. Um, so you'll be able to use these links more and that'll be like a starting point for different um, forums. And then if you're interested in getting into validation, there's also a link for that. So now we're gonna walk you through, you most likely already have Java or Jawsum, um, but in case you don't, we'll just walk you through some basic steps. So because Jawsum is a Java-based editor, you will need Java 8 or 
but it's easy to install. Again, you can just click that link um, and these will be sent out. And then once Java is downloaded um, from clicking this other link, um, you should be able to get the newest version and you're gonna wanna update it pretty frequently because there are regular updates to fix bugs or just different things that are going on on the interface. Um, but updates are really easy um, and it usually tells you when you log on that it might be time to update. And then I'll hand it over to Sarah for a little Jossum walkthrough. Okay, so this is just gonna be some more overview stuff about how Jossum works and some of the steps and the workflow that you'll need to go through before you can start editing on Jossum. So when you first open Jossum, this is what it's gonna look like. Again, like Danielle was saying, it might prompt you to update it. Um, and you should really try to work with the most recent version that's out there, just you know, so there's no bugs or anything like that. And also another reminder that Jossum does allow you to work offline. So you can download your data, do your edits, and then send them back up to the OSM server um, at a later time. So again, if you're just downloading Jossum for the first time, one of the first things you should do is authorize your OSM account. So this allows Jossum to know who's editing um, what and where. And if you've already connected your account, that's great. But just as a quick recap, you can go into edit and then preferences. This GIF is sort of showing you here how to do that on the side. You enter in your OSM username and information and you click authorize now or accept access token. Um, and then that allows you to start editing and have it be connected to your OSM account. Um, another thing you should do before you can start editing is to enable the remote control. And this is also inside that preferences window, um, which just allows you to work in Jossum and use commands. And I'll show you guys where to find these things when we get to the demo, um, but this is just a brief overview. Uh, next, you're gonna wanna download some plugins. And these are things that just extend the capabilities and functionality of Jossum, which definitely come in handy if you're gonna be mapping frequently. Um, this is also in the preference window, which I'll show you, but you can select this little puzzle piece icon um, and type in the name of the plugin that you wanna add, or you can browse through the list that they have of tools available. Um, one that you'll definitely want to do to add is the buildings tool, which just gives you more shortcuts for adding buildings, which is something that you know beginner mappers are definitely doing. Um, other helpful ones to download are Utils plugin 2 and the Mapathoner plugin, um, but this will all be covered in the demo. And then once you're through all those sort of beginning steps, um, this is just another view of what uh, the window will look like. You have your tools on the side that allow you to edit, add features, um, draw buildings, and then some of the panels on the right side show you which data layers you have turned on and off. And any associated tags or information that goes along with them. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Danielle. Great, thank you. Um, so now we're gonna talk about mapping features. Um, so this is about really getting, once you have Jossum all set up on your computer, this is about getting that imagery in and using the actual interface to like create the data you wanna create. Um, so first, when you download it, um, you can go to File Download from OSM, or you can just click the Download button in the Jossum interface, um, which looks just like the little button on the screen. Um, and then that'll open up, and you can have the Slippy map, um, which is pretty intuitive. You basically zoom in to like a square of like what you want to be downloading. Um, so use your mouse to pan around and draw a box to what you want to download. Um, and then on the next slide, we're just showing you that you can copy and paste a URL from OSM and make it your area of interest if that works better for you. Um, sometimes that can be a little bit more exact and you can do like a little less guessing work of where you wanna be. And then just another way that you can do that because one thing about OSM or Jossum is that there's a lot of ways to do one thing, which is pretty helpful when you're like starting out and you can find kind of what's most comfortable for you. So you can download data by pasting the URL, um, but also just doing control L. So it just directly creates a little box for you to copy and paste. So it's like a very efficient way of doing that. Okay, so you can, 
not what's showing. Um, or it may automatically load imagery if you're working out of a tasking manager on a specific project. But if there's not imagery that shows up automatically, you can click on imagery in the toolbar at the top, like the GIF is showing, and select from uh, a variety of different satellite imagery sources. Um, and it's good practice to check the project instructions if you're working on a specific project, because sometimes they want you to use a specific imagery source that they have decided is best for whatever they're working on. Uh, and this is just showing you how to turn data layers on and off. If you look at the top right side where it says layers, um, you can see there's data layer one being aerial imagery. And as long or as you keep adding more layers, they'll just appear there. And it's pretty small in here, but next to data layer one, there's a little eye icon, like a little eyeball. And you can click on that to turn different layers on and off if you wanted to isolate one or another. And once you've downloaded your data, you might not like the way it looks. So you can go into imagery preferences and adjust the brightness and all of these other th different things to make it better for you. Um, it's also important that you compare different satellite imagery sources um, to make sure you're using the one that best matches the data and the edits that are already in there. And it's super easy to do that. You just go into the imagery tab at the top. Oh, another thing I should mention is that you could move around your entire satellite image, imagery using a tool called imagery offset. Uh, so if you think everything needs to be slightly to the right or something, then you can just shift the whole image and not have to move around a bunch of buildings or roads. And again, you should always compare imagery sources when you're first starting out just to see which one matches best. So now we're going to go into a little demo and show you guys some of the tools that Danielle and I just talked about. Okay. Can you guys see my Jossum window? Yeah, you're good. Okay. How do I make this go away? Anyone know? You mean like to start a blank screen? Okay, just kidding. I got it. Okay. So this is what the JOSM window will look like when you first open it up. And um, some of those tools that I was originally talking about before you can start editing, you can find them in here in the preferences window. Let's see if it opens. Okay, so one of the first ones was to uh, connect your OSM account. So this little icon, I know it's kind of small, but it's two computers here. And I've already set this up because I've been using JOSM for a little bit of time. Um, but you can put in your information here and it's um, pretty easy to connect your account and then it'll just ask you to uh, accept the um, access token, uh, but you can do that pretty simply. And then this little puzzle piece icon is where you can uh, find your plugins. Let's see. Sorry, it's been a little slow. So these are some of the plugins that I have downloaded um, or you can go over here and search for one. And then you would just click on it, select all the ones you want, and then hit download list. And sometimes when you download plugins, it might ask you to restart Jossip, but that's really easy to do as well. And then this little button, it's kind of hard to see sometimes, but this is where you enable the remote control and that allows you to start working in Jossip. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and exit the preferences window. And like Danielle was saying, there's a lot of ways that you can download data. So one of them is to go up here to file and hit open location. And that's what she was talking about, where you can go to um, openstreetmap.org and you can sort of find the area that you wanna download there and copy the URL into here. Um, another way that you can do it is just to click this green button here. Let's see. And then, you know, it'll show you these options, but you want to be in the slippy map tab. So you can go ahead and zoom to an area that you're familiar with. And if you choose an area that's too large, it'll give you an error and say, you know, you can't download that much data at one time. So you would just go ahead and make it smaller, but this one should be fine. So you can go ahead and download that. So then you're gonna see all of this and it's like, whoa, there's a lot of data here. Um, 
which might be a little overwhelming at first, but once there's imagery behind it, it'll look slightly, you know, less terrible. So we can go up here and I'm just gonna go ahead and select Bing aerial imagery and let that load. And then you can sort of zoom in and see like uh, how well it fits the data. Oh, sorry, we zoomed in a lot there. And this one looks pretty good, but again, it's always good to check others. So we can also try maybe Maxar and then it'll change. This one also is pretty clear maybe a little bit more blurry, or you can see here that this building is not actually in line with the, the imagery here. So I'm gonna assume that whoever did these edits might've used Bing. So I'll go back to that imagery. Um, then one of the other tools that I mentioned, so this one matches up pretty well, but if it didn't, you can go into the imagery tab or tool at the top, click on imagery offset, Maybe, try again. Nope, that's okay. But that's how you would shift the imagery around behind your behind your JOSM data layer. Um, Sarah, you yeah. have, uh, because you have two uh, data image, uh, two sets of imagery loaded, when you go to- Oh, you're right, you're right, my bad. Right. That's, that was my problem. Okay, so there you go. You have to make sure if you have more than one um, imagery source downloaded, click on the one that you have that you want to edit. So for that, you would just um, right click and you can, oh, not happening. Hmm. Okay, well, this is how you would do that. I'm not sure why it's not moving around, but again, this one matches well and I don't really want to shift it. So I'm just going to cancel that there. Okay, and now we're going to go back to the presentation. Okay, thank you for demoing. Um, so now we're just going to talk a little bit about like more of the nitty gritty of what editing is and how we do it. So you can add points, lines, and shapes that represent um, the real life locations using the satellite data on Jawsome. Um, so we use the draw tool to just put sort of a node down and then connect it to other nodes. Um, and then we can use the preset menu and tagging to describe what these images are and what they represent. Um, and your progress will be measured in nodes, which I think is very similar to ID editor. So it might be a familiar uh, idea you're already familiar with. Um, and then just a general reminder to never map outside the area. Um, and then for basic operations, this part is pretty, intuitive, I would say. So you use your right button on the mouse to drag and the left to manipulate an element. So your left is like your main one that is, is the one that you're going to be doing when you're actually like editing. Um, and then of course, you use a scroll to zoom in and out. And if you're making a lot of edits, it might help to like get a mouse if you're working on your laptop. Um, and then there are basically three main modes of operation. So the first thing is selecting something. So it's going to highlight it in red and make sure that that's what you're selecting and what you're viewing and what you're editing and what you're actually directly making changes or creating to. And then the add tool is to add any tool or any, any node that you want um, is going to start with the add tool. Um, and then if you want to delete something, that's control delete. Um, but you can also definitely learn tools to fix what you might want to delete um, so that you can preserve the history of it and kind of honor the other authors that have like also been working on the work that you're doing. And then for just basic elements, I kind of covered what a node is. That's going to look like a tiny little square that's just a point. Um, and that marks a specific location or it's for drawing segments um, between locations. Um, and they are just points in space and each node will have an exact latitude and longitude. Um, and then a way is a list of nodes displayed as connect, like connected by line segments. So they're used to do things like roads, paths, fences, anything that's a little bit more two dimensional in real life. Um, and then the closed wear area is going to be 
a closed loop. Um, so it's used to describe things that are like buildings or islands that are more polygon shaped. And then in order to draw a standalone node, um, you clear your selection. Um, so you can use a couple ways. Um, so you can do selection and then unselect all, or you can press escape. Um, and then you press A, like the add tool, to start drawing nodes and begin drawing and tracing what you want to trace. And then on the left mouse button, um, you can just keep going until you're ready to double click. And the double click will end what you have selected as your piece of information that you're editing right there. So if I click along, and of course, Sarah will demo this, if I click along and then I'm done making my street, I'll just double click the last point that I want to be considered that street. And then it'll just return you to the select mode and you can start editing another feature. Um, and so this is just kind of really spelled out of what I just said, but if you press um, again somewhere, another node will appear and it'll join by the first segment of the way. Um, and then you can keep pressing um, until you have several segments and then to stop, it's either select again or double click. Okay, so once you're familiar with some of the JOSM basics that Danielle was talking about, you can use those skills to actually map, um, you know, the features on your imagery like roads. Um, so for a road, you're gonna make sure you select A on your keyboard to add data, or you can use the draw node tool, which would be on the left side. Um, you click to add your first node, and then you keep clicking um, along your road until, like Danielle said, you can double click to end it. And then things like roads also need to have tags, which we'll talk more, a little bit more about later but you can um, add a tag by uh, hitting S on your keyboard, going back to select mode, uh, clicking on the row that you just made and adding a tag in the tagging window, which is gonna be one of those right, um, right side panels. Another thing you can uh, map is land use. So this could be anything from residential or commercial or education. There's a bunch of, there's a bunch of different kinds of land use. Um, but basically you draw nodes around the area that you want to classify and to, uh, you know, make it a circle or whatever the polygon is, you draw your nodes and then you can finish the shape by clicking on the first node that you made. And again, you will have to add tags to make it, you know, visible as land use. So tags tell you and other users uh, more information about the features that are mapped there, and they are typically a key and value pair. So the key tells you a general classification of the feature. So if you're mapping a road, then the key value or the key tag would be highway. Um, and then the value gives you more specific information about the feature. So again, if you're mapping roads, it's going to be highway and the value would be residential. That's just one of many options. Um, there's a lot of information out there about how to properly tag features. So if you have a question or you're not sure how something should be classified, then there's more than likely a resource that can help, um, probably in one of those links that was on a slide from earlier. You also shouldn't add tags you don't know to be true just because you feel like you need to add more information. Um, so only add tags for information that you know for sure is true about the features um, that you're editing. So you can add a tag either um, in the tagging panel, which I'll show you, it'll be on the right. Um, you hit add tag and then it'll just allow you to select from a drop down menu, which is, you know, you're not going to be able to remember all of the tagging options that are out there. Um, so you can add them from the side, or there's also presets, which I will show you how to view in JOSM. Oh, this is the preset slide. Um, there's a lot of information on tagging already out there. So it's at the top of the window, you select presets um, and you can choose from highways, buildings, all of these options that you can see here. And then it'll allow you to input a bunch of information all at once without having to do it all manually. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about mapping buildings. So to use the building tool, you select B, and that makes it so that everything 
that you are creating when using the building tool has right angles and is already tagged as a building. Um, so you'll left click on the corner of a building and keep your mouse button pressed there. And then you'll move the printer along like the longest side and extend it out to wherever you want it to go to. And then you can kind of adjust the depth until it fits. Um, and then of course, left click to finish the shape. Um, the building tool will automatically square and tag your buildings again. So it's just gonna make something just more efficient. And if you know you're gonna be doing a bunch of buildings and you'll just lock yourself into um, the building tool. And if you don't wanna be in anymore, then you can just unselect. Um, and that's kind of like the benefit of like a preset or a tool like that, because you can assume certain qualities. And again, you can have that like efficiency. Um, and it's a very useful um, application of kind of what we were trying to get at earlier with why presets are important. Um, so the next tool we'll talk about is the extrusion for mapping buildings. So to map a building that is not just a square, so here it's like an L-shaped building or a T-shaped building, um, you can draw the rectangle that takes up the biggest portion and like the longest stretch of it. Um, and then you can select X on your keyboard and that'll make it so when you double click with your left that um, it creates another node. Um, and then you can kind of extend that like line that's been broken in half basically um, to wherever makes sense for where you wanna pull it to. So here in the GIF, they're just doing it along the side like that. And then, um, so X is for extrusion and you can go in and out, but you can, here it shows that you can extrude out, but you can also go in um, if you just so happen to draw a line that way and you don't wanna redo the building that you were making happens sometimes. Um, and then for the next slide, we're talking about circular buildings. So you still have to be in building mode um, and you can switch um, your building tool to circle mode if you're gonna be making a lot of them um, by doing Alt Z. And then you can trace the diameter of the circular building and it automatically creates a perfectly tagged circular building. Um, when you zoom in really close, it'll still have those sharp edges, but they'll all be equal. Um, so it's basically a circle. Um, so, and then if you want to switch back to rectangle, you can go Alt and R. And if you see that you're editing data and you can see that someone kind of tried to make a circle, you can also just click, um, like select what building they made and you can just press O and that'll make it so that all those little sides are even and appears a circle. And then to do courtyards, um, so you can draw one side with the rectangular building tool. So it's always just gonna be that longest stretch. And then you just select S um, of like what you have just traced and then reselect B. So then you can trace the remaining sides of the building um, and then you select all of them um, and it'll make it sh with shift J will like connect the buildings into one. Um, and sometimes if you, it's a good point to note that if anything's ever connected and it's not supposed to be a courtyard and you actually do think it's different, you can just select one of the buildings that has a connected node and you can just press a G to separate, but shift J will merge the buildings. And then for fixing buildings, um, this is pretty important, but like if for some reason someone wasn't using the building tool, you can, and it's just more likely that it's, that's the reason that it's not a square angle. Um, you can just select the entire thing, not just a point, but select the entire um, building. And then if you hit Q, it'll square all the angles automatically. Um, it might shift it around a little if it has to do that, if something's like really off angle, but then you can always just move it around. Um, and if that happens, you can use shift control or control alt to either resize or turn um, the building to make it exactly on top of the satellite imagery and have good data. Um, and then again, if kind of the opposite of shift J is if you need to click G and separate two buildings, um, but it'll still preserve their geometry. Okay, so now we're gonna go back into JOSM and show you guys how to do some of those things that we were just talking about. Okay, so I still have my old data layer here. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up a new layer. Oh, just kidding. Let's see. Okay, well, this is fine. So as Danielle was saying, you can switch back and forth. So right now I'm in the select tool, but if I hit A on my keyboard, that allows me to add nodes. So I can, I can add, you know, 
any shape that I want here essentially. Um, and this is one way that you can add buildings. So you see here, this, this doesn't have any information yet. It just looks like um, sort of a rectangle. So if I'm gonna add a building this way manually, I wanna make sure that I hit Q to square the corners of the building there. And one of the ways that I can add a tag is to go over here, you select add, and then you can search in here. We'll put in building, and then here you write building, yes. And so now you can see over here, that's a building. But then if you had downloaded the buildings plugin, you can add buildings by selecting B on your keyboard, and then that will automatically make, oh, sorry, I'm actually in the circular mode. Okay, <laughs> my bad. That will make a rectangular building for you like that. And it already has those 90 degree angles. Um, another thing you can do if you make a building, let's make one over here. If you select it, then it will, any other buildings that you add will be sort of in line with the one that you just created. So let's try and make a building with a courtyard like Danielle was saying. So now if we go ahead, I'm gonna hit S and I'm gonna hold the shift button to select all of those. And now I'm gonna say shift J and it's sort of joined all of the overlapping parts like that. You can also move your buildings around just by clicking and dragging on them or dragging them around, sorry. Um, and like I sort of did up here, you can make circular buildings, again, still in the building tool, select B on your keyboard and then hit Alt R, oh, Alt Z actually, sorry, excuse me. And then you can, you know, Let's see, just keep making circular buildings like that. Another thing you can do, oh, sorry. If you aren't, maybe there's nodes that are sort of arranged in a circular-ish shape, but you're like, okay, that looks like it should be a circle, but it's not. Um, you wanna go ahead and hit O on your keyboard and that will arrange the nodes in a circle. All right. Oh, also the extrude tool that Danielle was saying, maybe you have a building here. Oh, I keep forgetting to do this. Sorry guys, Alt R, rectangular building. Maybe you have a building here and you're looking at your imagery and you're like, oh, that doesn't actually look like a rectangle. Maybe it's an L-shaped building. You hit X on your keyboard for extrude and you would select a node there and you can extend it out like that. Um, you can do that anywhere to make the building, whatever shape it needs to be. Um, let's see, oh, we also talked about mapping roads. So you would do that by going back and hitting A on your keyboard to draw nodes. And you can just sort of trace along wherever your road is. But this, again, doesn't have any tags associated with it. So you can add them over here, or this is um, another way. You can go into presets. And we'll, we'll go to highways. So let's see, oh, sorry. Highways, streets, and you know, I want this to be a residential road. So then this big window will pop up. And if you know any more information about the road, then you can add that in, or you can just select apply preset. And now when you look at it, you can click on it and see that it is a residential highway. Uh, and if you add different tags to different roads, they will appear differently. So I can add a different tag over here and I will do highway and I want this one to be a path. And now you can see that it has sort of a different look than the residential road. Um, another helpful tool going back to buildings you can move them around, but you can also rotate them or scale them. So to rotate, you're going to do shift and command at the same time, but on, oh, that's on Mac. Um, on a PC, it's gonna be shift and control at the same time. But if I'm hitting those tools, then you can rotate your buildings in a circle like that. Um, and then to resize them on a PC, it's gonna be alt and control at the same time. I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to hit Option and Command at the same time. And you can see how the little um, cursor icon changes, but you can make it bigger or smaller, which is really helpful. Um, some other things you can do, let's see, let's draw some more roads that we can edit here. 
Okay, so here we have a nice road. We'll add a tag. It can be a residential road. Let's see. And maybe I decide later on that I want it to actually be two different segments instead of one. So to do that, I'm gonna select wherever I want to separate them and hit P on my keyboard. And now I have two separate line segments and I can move them sort of independently, but they're still connected. Um, and if I wanted to put them back, I'm gonna hit shift and select both elements of the road and hit C on my computer and now they are, or keyboard, and now they're back to being one and I can move that all together. Um, you can also, let's try to add another one. You can make intersections. I can zoom in over here maybe a little bit. So there's an intersection here, but there's no node that connects them. So these roads aren't connected in any sort of way. So I can add a node here. And then if I select the one that's closest to it, then I hit M on my keyboard. M is for merge. And now they are connected and I can move it along the other road that I made. And it will also move that intersection if one of them, what if one of the roads is moving? And to undo that, you can select this node again and hit G. G is for glue or unglue, and now they are independent of each other again. Um, so those are just a few of the editing tools uh, that you can use. And you'll see shortly that there are a lot of them. There are a lot of keyboard shortcuts, and it might seem overwhelming to try and remember all of them, but as you map and as you edit more, you'll remember them and it'll be easier for you. All right, let's go back here. Yeah, so hopefully that demo applied everything and made it make more sense than just looking at a GIF or hearing me talk about it. Um, but once you've made all your edits, you have to somehow, you've downloaded data, you've made edits, and now you need to somehow push that back onto OSM. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, you should be doing this very frequently, but um, you can select the hard disk icon um, with like the upwards green arrow. So just like we downloaded with the downwards green arrow, you're gonna upload with the upwards green arrow um, or control shift up arrow if you wanna be using your keyboard. Um, and then here is an opportunity to add like change set comments, which look like hashtags um, and execute the upload. Um, by hitting enter. And this is an opportunity to sort of label your work. Maybe if you're working on a mapathon with your university or something, you can do make like a hashtag associated with that. So everyone knows that the work you were doing was like together for that project. Um, and once you've uploaded all that, um, the next slide kind of talks about if you're doing this directly from Hot Task Manager. Um, so you can ensure that Jossum is running and then you find the project um, in the tasking manager. And if you hit Jossum, it'll automatically load in what that little blue box is showing you for either validation or it'll be white if you're mapping. Um, and then at this like stage, you can do, select Jossum, but you can also make it so that if you really find that you love Jossum, you can go into your own settings and make it like automatically open, like assume that you want Jossum. Um, so that every time you press contribute, it'll just know that you want to use Jossum. Um, and then on the next slide, we're just saying that when you save and upload, the window that appears shows a list of objects that you're adding and the objects you're modifying or deleting. So that'll also be measured in nodes. It'll be like you're adding 16 nodes and a change set or something like that. That's kind of the language that they use. Um, and then in the box at the bottom, you're asked to add a comment describing your work. Um, for instance, you could be like new roads and features in my neighborhood or specify your source, um, especially if you have local knowledge of an area and you're able to say, oh yeah, that's a building, but I know also that it is a hospital. So that would be something that's very beneficial to know and your local knowledge is obviously very important um, and highly valued. So um, for your first upload, um, Jossum will ask you to enter your OSM account details just so that everything can be associated with your account. Um, and then to see your changes um, on the next slide, um, you can open your internet browser and go to OpenStreetMap and move the map around and you can see what you edited. Um, and that's really cool because now it is like knowledge that's put out in the world. Um, and if you don't see your changes immediately, don't worry. It can take a few minutes for everything to show up, especially if you made a lot of edits. 
Um, and it might take a couple minutes to actually show up, but it will be there, so don't panic. Um, and then on the next slide, we're just showing you a little Jawsome keyboard that you can even like print out if you really want, um, and that'll also be sent out. Um, but Sarah was just showing us how we use some of those shortcuts. So Sarah, if you wanna talk about any of them. Yeah, I'm sorry guys. I realize we also haven't been asking if you guys had any questions, but if you do, please ask them or put them in the chat and I can go back into Jossum and demonstrate any of those things again for you. Um, and I know, again, this looks like a lot, but once you start mapping, you'll pick them up pretty quickly. Um, Sarah, um, somebody asked if you can show more on the plugins. So maybe show oh, okay. Mountona and other plugins that you have. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we can go back into Jawsome. Sorry, what did you just say, Maxwell? I, I missed the last part. Like, um, the question is share more on plugins and then, um, so maybe if you have other plugins that you want to demo for people to see, like maybe Maptona. Okay, so um, again, I can do that. This, you go into the preference window to add them. This is where you would, um, you know, search for your plugins, the little puzzle piece icon. Um, and these are all of the ones that I have installed, but we can go back out here. Oh, sorry. Um, Mapathoner is one of the plugins that you can add, um, which is helpful for validation work or just checking if your uh, edits have any sort of errors. So here, let me show you. If I add some buildings like this, or you know, what would be buildings? Let's see. We can make them buildings. And then I go into my Mapathoner tab up here. And again, this is from a plugin. I highly suggest you guys download this one um, if you're going to be mapping. And I select um, non orthogonal buildings. Then it will highlight those two and it'll be like, oh, they don't have 90 degree angles. Um, and you can go ahead and just hit Q on your keyboard and it'll automatically square them for you, which is really helpful. Um, Mapathoner can also make multiple um, rectangular and circular buildings at the same time, which is just another helpful tool. Any other questions? If not, um, then thank you guys. I hope this was helpful for everyone. Um, we still have little bit of time left if anyone has anything else they need to ask or wants to see again but other than that thanks if you um so uh, first great job daniel and sarah thank you very much um can you go bring jocelyn back up and maybe um show a couple more things like the uh, how to run the validation tool oh, yeah, yeah, with yeah. Uh, topology issues and maybe how to do a couple of basic searches uh, using the search function okay so let's see, let's make this a building. Um, okay, so another helpful tool that we have here in Jawsome that um, you can use is the validation window here. So if I am doing my edits and then I wanna see maybe if something's not looking right or like they don't want to, they won't upload your data with this error, then you can go down here and click validate. And then you can see there's a lot of warnings, so it's going to highlight the things that it thinks are wrong. Um, you can click on warnings here. So read, we'll read this unconnected nodes without physical tag. So you can go here and zoom to where they think the problem is. So this is just a node that I have. Oh, sorry. Again, if you try to, that's an error that comes up if you try to move something too far. Um, but this is just a node that I have, and it's not labeled. Okay, sorry, this is, there you go. It's not labeled, it's not connected to anything. So this would just be a node that I would go ahead and do control delete to get rid of that. And then I'm gonna hit validate again. Oh, okay. Oh, well now it's saying that there are no more errors, but if I had, um, you know, maybe some overlapping buildings, let's try that. That would be something that they don't like overlapping buildings, you can zoom to the problem and you're like, oh, okay, there shouldn't be buildings on top of each other. Oh, you can't have them all selected or else it will move them all at once. Um, but you can move them away from each other. 
like that. Okay. Oops, sorry guys, it's being a little slow. All right. Is that is that what you wanted me to cover, Professor Hinton? Yes, yeah, that was uh, that was good. Okay, cool. So we had a uh, another question in the chat there from Charles. What is the name of the tool that shows overlapping buildings uh, when uh, when teachers are validating or when you're validating when you share the name? So I think it's oh, um, so when so if I had overlapping buildings, that would just be shown in the validation panel, and I think I'm not sure where you add that to the side here. Oh, Windows. Okay. So when you go into JOSM, um, the validation panel might not be there, but if you just click on validation results, see if I if I unselect it, then it'll be removed. But I can add it back to my information panel on the side by clicking validation results, and then it should appear there. Awesome. Great. Yeah, and there was another question in the chat just about like getting the materials and um, I think both the videos and slides. Oh, yes, Annika just answered. So yes, both the videos and the slides will be emailed to everyone that had the link to this event. So you'll have access to all this. And of course, at the beginning, when I was sharing the first few slides, there's going to be a ton of links that you, that'll help you with like the details of everything um, and kind of walk you through certain problems you might run into or just set up things. Are there any other questions regarding the Jawsome tool or a tool or a, um, a shortcut or something you'd like to see demoed um, when it comes to creating features or manipulating features of any kind um, before we move on to the next uh, next bit? Actually, I have one when thinking about it. Um, can you go over? unblue ways again like if you say if you had a yeah. building um and a road was attached to its corner and things get all wonky and then which you know shouldn't happen so how to sort of um, yeah. fix that okay so say i have my building here and then i also have a road and you're like okay well why is there a road that's connected to a building um you know that doesn't make any sense and if you try to move them around they're still connected like that which is annoying so to unglue them, I'm gonna select the node where they're connected and select G. And now I should be able to move them independently of each other, but maybe I wanted them like that. So I could, if I wanted to select those nodes and merge them with the M tool, and now they are connected again, but that is not something that you would generally do. So I'm gonna unglue them again with G on the keyboard. Awesome. Yes, that's really good. And um, and there are you know there are a host of different um, tools you can um, you know you can use here. I'm already scratching the surface with some of them. Some of the basic ones that give you editing to create points, sort of ways and closed ways, or points, lines, and polygons in GIS. Week. And some of the tools will help you sort of correct any sort of topological errors, like using the validation um, using that validation blue check mark tool. You will be able to um, identify, or it will be able to identify any topological errors when you have uh, buildings going through roads or buildings on top of buildings, which don't obviously exist in real life, and alert you to that. It'll also identify anything that hasn't been tagged, um, or if there's a conflict between tags and things like this. So it's a great tool to run. Just keep to make sure your own uh, data that you're creating are sort of clean as possible. Um, Sarah, are you able to um, uh, able to sort of demo the search function at all? Put you on the spot here. I know. I where is the search function? Sorry. The search function. Search yeah. function. You can do uh, Control uh, F or the button magnifying glass at the top there. Oh, okay, cool. Um, okay, what should I search for? Um, you search for uh, buildings. Oh, okay. Example. Sorry, I don't use the search function much, but oh, no match found for buildings. 
So the um, the search function it, it takes a little bit to get used to, um, and it, but it, be, it can be quite powerful, especially if a lot of different objects that have been um, pulled into um, pulled into your data set. So for instance, you want to identify all of the buildings, you would have to say you know building equals yes. So it still works off that sort of key value pairing. So you put in, but actually change up the building. Oh, because in the tagging system has building up buildings. I've made that mistake so many times um, <laughs> that now I know. So okay, now you can see it identifies everything that's in your uh, in your um, data set that is a building, and um, and if you wanted to identify buildings with particular nodes, a node count like at least four nodes or four nodes or less or more than four nodes, all those kind of things could can be done. So you can actually build sort of complex um, queries to identify the specific features to help you, especially again, if you have different types of roads and different types of buildings and whatnot, and different types of features in your data set, you can use the, you can, you can um, use this function to actually select out those particular features so you can investigate them, you can interrogate those particular features, and then do what you need to do and then, you know, work through them. So it helps you sort of filter through data, um, which is pretty, can be pretty, pretty useful. For instance, if you had Looking for roads, maybe someone had a number of roads and they actually tagged them as just road. Then you could actually look for all features that have that tag of road and then sort of address those one by one or as, as a group as needed. So it's a pretty, pretty powerful tool. There's some, um, there's a couple of uh, wikis here I'm going to put in the chat window, which um, yeah, that will give you some information on how to use the search function. Um, I would like to see, I wish they had a more robust, um, they mean OSM universe, had a more robust um, sort of catalog wiki of how to use the search function, but there is some information out there, but it seems to be a little bit scattered. But when you get used to it and you get used to it, it becomes quite a handy tool when you're working through uh, data sets. Are there any other Questions in the general population? Okay, awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Danielle. Um, obviously, we're still all still here uh, to answer questions regarding this presentation. But right now, what I'd like to do is now hand it over to uh, Sabani, who is going to talk to us about um, the Rapid plugin for Jossum. Hey, Sabani, the floor is yours. Okay, Shabani, maybe. Oh, there you are. Yes, Richard. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm going, I'm going to share my screen. Mm -hmm. <sighs> thank you, everybody. See my screen. Yes, yep, you're good. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, we are we are deep in on how to use uh, Josem or map with AI plugin in Josem uh, to to detect some features. So, uh, my name is Shaban Magawira, as I told before. You can reach me uh, through Twitter, email, and LinkedIn. I will share this uh, slide after the session. Yeah. So the topic, uh, we will cover this topic, first introduction to map with AI, but also how to install it and how it works. Yeah, so uh, uh, map with AI, this is a tool or plugin, which is available in JOSM. Uh, it help us to detect uh, some uh, features. I mean, features like uh, building load, uh in in Josem. so instead of you uh to map the building uh the map with ai plugin it act between uh to detect for you the building so it is simplified the work but also uh it is speed up the mapping process yeah so we have this uh, high resolution satellite image which are trendy 
uh, to to detect uh, to to get the, the the features and features mostly detectives uh, can detect road uh, I mean building and so so on. So then this data it is imported into the JOSEM and you, you have confirmed that the uh, the plugin detected uh, the building. So you have to confirm that is the building and then you have to import it in the prod to OSM server. Yeah. So this is a step on how you can install the plugin as uh, we used to, to install different kind of plugin. You have to go to edit and then I have to go to preference as usual. And then you have to uh, to search into the plugin, have to search uh, map with AI. So you see we have a vision, uh, mostly the, the updating the new vision. So you have to check uh, the new vision. So you have to click and, and click okay. And then uh, the plugin is done. So uh, after you install the plugin, the plugin will be available to the data uh, toolbar. So you have to go to the toolbar and you have to, to search for a task that you need to, to map. So you have to go to maybe you have to go to the hot task manager to select your project and the task. And then you have to ring to the JOSEN. After you ring to the JOSEN, uh, the, the task will, will look like this. And then you have to go to the data and map with AI. You have to click map with AI, download data. So after you download the data, I mean map with AI data, uh, it will appear in the layer panel. And then it will the layer will, will, will have a number of detected feature. Yeah. So this is the procedure, how it works. So you have to, 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 uh, you have to select the area that you needed to map and then how to go to map with the AI, download the data and map with the add selected data after, after the data have been, uh, uh, downloaded, you have to, uh, to, to click the features if it is a load. So you have to confirm it is really load. And then, uh, hello, you have to confirm that you have to add selected data into, uh, into chosen into data layer. And then you have to clean. Maybe if there is a cleaning, you have to clean and then upload it. So for more tutorial, uh, I will share this uh, the tutorial, I'll share this link. I mean this uh, slide. So writers are trying the demo. I think everybody see my screen. I'll see in the uh, yeah your the uh, yeah so so you have to go uh, maybe to the task manager you have to select any task or any project and then you have to select the task uh, let me find another task yeah so you have to select the task maybe this one the white one then in at the editor you have to make sure that you you press the chosen you input chosen so after you have to map selected the task so the chosen will pop up and uh i'm going to share also the chosen Okay, now you see my screen. It is a JOSEM. Yeah, so after you select the task, it will appear in your JOSEM, as we see. So what you need to do, you have to go to the data and then you have to go to 
uh, to map with AI. So here you have to make sure that you have a strong uh, network. You have to make sure that you have a strong network. So you have to go to map with AI and then you have to go to map uh, data download then I have to select. So it will search the variable data within the task. So if you have a good networking and a strong networking, the data will appear in purple color. So rate uh, waiting. Yeah, so have this message that you don't have uh, maybe this area don't have the data so if there is no data you have to go and to search for the an area with the data so then you have to to input your data and uh yeah as i as i show you in in, in the in the slide yeah so this is how map with artificial intelligence it works uh, maybe if there is a question Awesome, that's great, Shabani. Any any questions um, regarding the method AI in Jonathan here? Oh, Charles has his hand up. Charles, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I just have two questions regarding AI. And my first question is, why is always when you're using uh, I'm up with AI a lot and, uh, and I also teach the other guys, but why is it that always when you're mapping using AI, it will make the, the laptop to to stop working most of the time, it will it 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 will make the JOSM to freeze at a long time. Why? What what really caused that? Then my second question is when you are selecting the the building from AI to take it to the to the OSM layer. Why there's no option that you cannot just select all of them, then you move them together to the JOSM layer? Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. So uh, here, the issue is sometimes you need, you need to have uh, uh, updated the uh, plugin. I mean, first you, have, you need to have updated the plugin, but also uh, you need to have a updated the driver which will enable you to uh, to learn this plugin because uh, the plugin uh, is very uh, strong so it need it require also the updated driver and uh, in order to do the rendering as we can as we can see that it uh, it, it have to detect so it is a model that it, it have to detect the current features so it take a lot of uh, time. I mean, uh, it's much time to 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 do the the date the the detection. So what you need, uh, you have to update the drivers. Uh, like the Java runtime, you have to update it. But also you have to update some another driver, uh, which you will also if if you have a old division of our JOSM, also need to update it. But the, in case of you need to select uh, multiple features from uh, map with AI, I think uh, you can, you can, you have to, I, I, I don't think that you have to select, if it is a building, have to select uh, more than one building and then you have to go to uh, map, you have to go to, to add the data, add the selected data, so each will uh, add the data into the layer. Thank you. Awesome. We have another question from Joseph. You can go ahead and take yourself off mute and ask. Yeah, yeah, hello. Uh, tell us the question which I wanted to ask, why you can't move all the buildings at once? Why do you have to select all of them? And the question has been uh, answered. Thank you. Ah, perfect, okay. Any other... uh, I said, oh, go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. 
Have I uh, answered the, your question? Yes, you have answered the question why you can't move all the buildings at once once you have downloaded them from the map to the air flag. Okay. Excellent. Are there any yeah, other uh, questions or anything else you'd like to say, Shabani? All right. If there are no more questions, um, if you can stop sharing your screen, Shabani. Um, we can get back to uh, our regular scheduled programming. Awesome. Um, yes, well, yeah, one last. Sorry, go ahead. And oh, here I am. Um, all right, so we're actually ending up a little bit early, um, but if there are no sort of final questions before you guys uh, get back to your regular scheduled programming um, for the day, then I just want to say thank you very much, everybody, for uh, for attending. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. And um, as was mentioned in the chat, and, and I'll reiterate again, um, this recording as well as the slide presentations will be available. And Shabani mentioned, I believe you will make your slides available as well. So if you want to send those to me, I will sort of ship those out with everybody else with all the other um, with, with our slide presentation once um, we have everything sort of squared away with the recording. And then the recording, of course, will live on the Youth Mappers YouTube page. So you can come back to it anytime you wish. Okay. All right. So again, thank you, Sarah and Danielle, for leading the training today and Shabani for your contribution with the Map with AI. Really appreciate your guys' time today. And everybody else, hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. Please stay safe and we hope to see you again soon. Take care.